Welcome to ECFA Edu Block. My name is uh, Uncle P, and I'll be having you with, uh, on the board protista and look at the lesson objectives. We're going to be looking at the uh, characteristic features of protists, the groups of phyla under the protists, the characteristic differences of the groups, class of protozoa, characteristics of the protozoa, and then animal-like and plant-like features of the euglena and the alga protista. And I want you to go to the exercises after the objectives. I'd like you to go to the past question, uh, work past question, jam past question, and then best choice in simplified biology uh, by Uncle P. All right. Characteristics, features of the protists. Like you know, the protists forms their own kingdom. All right. In this protists, we have a group or the class of animal-like protists and uh, plant-like protists but we want to look at their general features and uh, one of the general features of the protists is that all members are eukaryotic eukaryotic in the sense that the group of organism under this class bears or possess a well-defined nucleus and the nuclear membrane that is the meaning of eukaryotic all members are eukaryotic and then secondly, second feature is that they are all aquatic. That is, they are basically found in water habitats, basically freshwater like ponds, lake. Third, they are all unicellular or single cell organism. That's what it is, that's what it means. Unicellular or single cell organism. And then next, basically here, reproduction is asexual asexual by binary fission or multiple fission even though some members can reproduce sexually by fusion of what gametes so these are the basic features of the kingdom protista they are eukaryotic meaning without nucleus all members are aquatic all members are unicellular simple organism by their reproduction is basically by asexual, but some few members reproduce sexually. The type of asexual reproduction here is by binary word, fission or multiple fission. In binary fission, only two daughter cells are formed from the parent cell. In multiple fission, two or more daughter cells are produced. Now, I'm going to break this kingdom now. Break this kingdom into four groups called phylum. All right, so let's see it. The first group of this kingdom is protozoa. Protozoa. That is phylum protozoa. Remember, this is a kingdom. This is the phylum. But there are four groups under this kingdom protista, I've just mentioned one now. This is what? Protozoa. Then the second, the second group under this protist is phylum phylum euglenophyta. Of course, what you know as euglena. This is euglena. I will tell you why euglena is on its own separate phyla different from other protozoa. And then the second group of these protists is phylum chrysophyta. 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 And like I told you, there are four groups in number. I think I mentioned three now. The last, but not the least, is pyrophyta. All right, this groups of uh, protista under this uh, four major phylum protozoa protozoa are protists they are protists that are animal like in nature animal like in nature they are all animals let's put it that way um euglenophyta are protists that shares two characteristics. They have uh, characteristics of plants and that of animals. So they belong to their own group called euglenophyta. The only example of organisms that share that two kind of characteristics of plants and animal 
is Euglena. Euglena. And then the two here are only plants like protists. Plant like protists. What is plant like protists? In Cresophyta and Pyrophyta, the, these two group of phylum or organisms under this uh, uh, phylum consist of chlorophyll. They all have pigments for making their own food from the sun. The Cresophytes and the Pyrophytes. So, but basically, what connect these four phylums or what connect these four group of organisms under this umbrella body protease is due to the fact that these organisms are all unicellular organisms. That is the meaning of protists. Groups here are all unicellular, meaning they are all single cell organisms. And they are all dependent organisms, the four groups here. And now we're going to look at the characteristic features of each of these. Each of these phylum, protozoa, euglenophyta, crestophyta, and pyrophyta. Uh, but before we do that, the phylum protozoa is further splitted into class, into about four classes, further splitted into four classes, four classes, namely Sarcodina. These are the first class of protozoa. Next is Ciliata or Ciliophora. And next group is Mastigophora. Like I told you, it's four class under protozoa, Sarcodina, Ciliophora, Mastigophora, then the last but not the least is Esporozoa. I want you to take note, I want you to take note of something. One thing was not about this protozoa. Look at it here. Protozoa. Protozoa is that all of this class, all of this class are also unicellular. Like we have mentioned it before now, that this is why they are what? Protista. Because they are what? Uniword, cellular. And most likely, their mode of reproduction, reproduction is basically by asexual, through what I call binary word fission. Uh, even though some class of protists here reproduce sexually. But we're still going to see that in the course of the class. And now, one of the characteristics here is that most members or most class of protozoa use different means of movement or locomotion, okay? Like the four of the class here, uh, this protozoa, the Sarcodina are class of protozoa that use their outer membrane, outer membrane, which is the ectoplasm for locomotion. And that's that structure used for movement in the member Sarcodina is pseudo. Podia, pseudo podium, pseudo podium. What it means? It means that the the structure for movements is false. We call it in biology false feet. Uh, there is no specific uh, structure here for movements. I think uh, when I will put up the structure of uh, the name Sarcodina, I will be able to explain to you what, how the mechanism of this structure calls to the polia and why we refer to it as false leg or false feet. And then another group of protozoa that that shows little advancement is Ciliophora. Ciliophora, the word Ciliophora is associated with the kind of movements this protozoa. The kind of movements in this protozoa. The movement in this class of protozoa is aided by another structure called cilia. 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 Cilia is another word used to describe shorts. Short whip. Short whip. Short whip. A good example of uh, this class of uh, protozoa is paramecium. A good example of this class of protozoa, that is a uh, sarcodina, is amoeba. Amoeba. And then, to the mastigophora. Mastigophora 
Mastigophora are a class of protozoa that uh, uses structure called um, flagella. Flagella for movement or locomotion. These are the mastig mastigophora. Example is dino, dino flagellates. Okay, so see that the, the three class of protozoa, they all show some structures of movements. The, the, the group of uh, protozoa under sacodina are protozoa without feet, called pseudopodia. And then the silophora are class of protozoa with cilia for movement. Like I told you, cilia is a short whip. And then the class of protozoa with long whip called flagella are the mastigophora. And then the last but not the least is sporozoa. The sporozoa, the class of sporozoa are those um, member organisms that don't have either pseudopodia. They don't have either pseudopodia, pseudopodia, pseudopodium, cilia, or flagella. That means the, the class of sporozoa either possess pseudopodia, cilia, or flagella. It means that all this structure for locomotion is absent here. Are you mean? So in this case, no structure for movement. A typical example of this class of protozoa is plasmodium. Plasmodium. All right, let's go back again to this first class here, the sarcodina. In this sarcodina, there's a little group in this sarcodina. You know that this one, sarcodina, is applicable to protozoa that there is protozoa that has uh, that the shape is they are called shapeless protozoa because of what they don't have a particular structure for locomotion. In most cases, they can use their entire outer surface for movement, and because of that, each time the outer surface is used for movement. The, the surface is deformed, leading to what? The structureless position of this class of uh, organism, or this class of protozoa. And that's why they are sarcodina. But basically, there are two classes of sarcodina, depending on the structure of pseudopods. This, this, this structure here used for movement. In the pseudopods are blunts, two blunts in nature, it now means that this sarcodina is now further proved or further classified into smaller class or subclass called, called rhizopoda. What does it mean? Rhizopoda here means class of sarcodina with blunt pseudopodia, blunt, uh, blunt uh, structure for what? Locomotion. I've given you the example of this is what? Paramagium. Then, dinoflagellates are the class of protozoa with flagella. That means they use flagella for locomotion. Cilia here aid locomotion. Pseudopodia here aids locomotion. But in this class of protozoa, there is no structure for locomotion. So they neither possess pseudopodia, cilia, or flagella. And all members here, all members here and here, are parasites to man and other animals. All members here, all members here and here are free living. Free living. That is to say that they can only can only see them in most likely aquatic air habitat. Or like most of you know that the plasmodium is a major cause of what? Malaria, parasite to birds and man. It's being transmitted or it's being carried by a female and not feless. Mosquito. Uh, of course, the class of Mastigophora that uh, that can also parasite. This, this one is being transmitted by uh, Cecefly. Cecefly. We call it Trypanosome. The major cause of Trypanosomiasis. So the two basic protozoa that are parasites to man are Mastigophora and Sporozoa. Remember, the class of Mastigophora possess flagella for locomotion. The class of Sporozoa possess neither, neither pseudopodia, cilia, or flagella. Mm -hmm.